Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrink. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the National Security Advisor, Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council and Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the promotion to the rank of Lieutenant General. Following a royal order by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness highlighted the vital role of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in achieving military successes and developing military capabilities. His Royal Highness wished His Highness Sheikh Nasser continued success in his future endeavors. Royal Guard Special Force Commander Tent Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa congratulated National Security Advisor Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council and Royal Guard Commander His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa for being promoted by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the rank of Lieutenant General. His Highness praised the important national roles played by His Highness Sheikh Nasser in various sectors and confirmed that this comes in appreciation of the outstanding efforts made by His Highness in many areas that contributed to achieving successes for the Kingdom of Bahrain and raising its status on the global level. He wished His Highness success in achieving more gains under the leadership of His Majesty the King. First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the final match of the Khalid bin Hamad Cup for the Golden Generation of Volleyball Cubs category, which was held yesterday evening at Isa bin Rashid Volleyball Hall between the Al Nasr and Dar Kleb clubs. The final was attended by Vice President of the General Sports Authority, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, CEO of the General Sports Authority, Dr. Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar, and President of the Bahrain Volleyball Association, Sheikh Ali bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. After the match, Al Nasr was crowned with the Khalid bin Hamad Cup for the Golden Generation after its victory over Dar Kleb 3-1. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed his pleasure with the success of His Highness's Golden Generation League, organized by the National Association in cooperation and support of the General Sports Authority for the first time this season, and received positive uh, feedback, noting the distinguished reaction due to the importance of this initiative and the emergence of a promising generation of players capable of representing the national teams in the future. His Highness praised the impressive levels presented by the two teams in the final match. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa affirmed that His Highness's Golden Generation League has contributed to doubling the interest in the age group teams, which are of great importance to numerous national teams, as the league enjoyed active participation by the clubs, which contributes to the success of this initiative. His Highness stressed that the volleyball game was and still is one of the games that brought out many talents, and that His Highness's Golden Generation League will enhance the emergence of these distinguished talents for the national teams and clubs and various forum participants. Under the royal patronage, the General Union for Bahrain Workers organized today a celebration marking the International Labor Day. Addressing the ceremony, the Minister of Labor, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, conveyed the greetings and best wishes of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to all Bahraini workers. The Minister praised the renewed initiatives implemented by the Kingdom of Bahrain to ensure sustainable growth in the labor market, building on the achievements made in terms of providing quality job opportunities for citizens and stimulating an encouraging work environment, and the efforts made by the government 
government in transforming challenges into opportunities for construction progress and growth in various fields. Minister Hamidan thanked all loyal workers and employee, employers who contributed in a high patriotic spirit to achieving more national gains and moving forward towards a brighter future. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the international community in observing the International Labor Day marked worldwide on May 1st. In appreciation of the great role and remarkable efforts of workers in building their homelands and achieving comprehensive and sustainable development, it is being an opportunity, it is being an opportunity to highlight workers' achievements and contributions to the nation, nation building and development, as well as to affirm their pivotal role in the three production parties. The workers of the Kingdom of Bahrain enjoy the support and backing of the wise leadership regarding labor issues and the rights and gains of workers through legislation that reinforce this. The Kingdom of Bahrain is a model to be followed globally in providing ways to guarantee the health, safety and well-being of workers, supporting and empowering them and preserving all their rights in a balanced manner with employers through a system of legislation that regulate labor relations that came in implementation of the wise leadership's directives based on civilized values and in line with international standards. The Kingdom of Bahrain also applies many laws that contribute to enhancing a safe work environment that reduces the risk of accidents and occupational diseases to ensure the safety of workers as well as possible. The progress achieved in the labor system in the Kingdom of Bahrain came as a result of the royal visions and the support and backing of His Majesty the King for the workers in various fields of production with spirit and, de and determination as part of Team Bahrain in order to achieve prosperity and growth for the Kingdom of Bahrain locally and in all international forms. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhru, hailed the growth of investment projects in international factories based in Bahrain, pointing out that the facilities and advantages provided by the government to ensure their smooth work have contributed to attracting major international projects in the Kingdom of Bahrain. This came during the visit of the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhru, to the Universal Rolling Rebar Factory in Salman Industrial City, where he was received by Chairman and CEO of the factory, Mahar Abu Ghazali, and a number of senior officials. The Minister also took the factory and listened to a briefing on all stages of manufacturing and production. Unirol is one of the largest steel factories in the Kingdom of Bahrain. It is located in Salman Industrial City and operates according to the highest local and international environmentally friendly quality standards. The Minister of Works, Ibrahim bin Hassan al Hawaj, has revealed the awarding of 35 tenders during the first quarter of this year to a number of projects in various sectors at a cost of about 32 million Bahraini dinars. The Minister of Works explained that these projects were distributed among the various sectors of the ministry with 15 projects for the road sector, 9 projects for sanitation, 10 projects in the buildings and maintenance project sector and another project within the technical services sector. He pointed out that the projects that were awarded come within the plans and efforts of the ministry in developing the infrastructure to keep pace with the investment and urban development and supporting the wheel of economic development. The Minister of Sustainable Development, Noor bin Ali Al Khleif, has affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's keenness to continue consolidating areas of cooperation with the United Nations and supporting its goals aimed at achieving sustainable development. The Minister noted the importance of advancing this partnership towards broader horizons for further development and, and at all levels. This came during her meeting with the President of the United Nations General Assembly at its 77th session, Yasab Khurashi, during which ways to enhance constructive cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Nations were discussed in a way that supports the Kingdom's efforts in achieving its national obligations in the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. During the meeting, the Minister reviewed the Kingdom of Bahrain's preparations to present the second voluntary national review related to the progress made in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals during the high-level political forum on sustainable development during next July at the United Nations. On the sidelines of the joint annual meeting of Arab financial institutes held in Rabat, Morocco, finance and national economy under Secretary Yusuf Abdullah Hamoud participated in the high-level policy roundtable climate finance to achieve sustainable transformation. The workshop discussed identifying the most important financial and monetary policies used to face climate challenges, the role of governments in reducing climate challenges and achieving an immediate response to confront them. The workshop also touched upon the role of regional and international financial institutions in supporting Arab countries to confront climate change and achieve sustainable sustainability through optimal investment in clean energy technologies and finding innovative solutions to provide companies and individuals with energy efficient improvements to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. 
An implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, a total of 92 Bahraini citizens and residents of other nationalities have been evacuated safely from Sudan, said the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Foreign Minister said that the evacuees who were stranded in the Republic of Sudan arrived in Bahrain International Airport from the city of Jeddah in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs coordinated with the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Health to receive the evacuees at the Bahrain International Airport and facilitate procedures for them. In a statement today, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs called on warring parties to halt clashes, avoid escalation and engage in dialogue to reach peaceful solutions that safeguard Sudan's security and stability. During the first quarter of 2023, the Bahrain International Exhibition Center, also called Exhibition World Bahrain, witnessed a busy schedule of events as it successfully hosted eight local and international events and attracted 70,000 visitors from all over the world. This confirms the high competitiveness or the high comp competitive potential of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the exhibition and conference industry and its interest in creating economic openness located in Sakhir, adjacent to the Bahrain International Circuit. The spectacular new Exhibition World Bahrain Bahrain will place a global spotlight on Bahrain as the region's newest destination to attract the world's most prestigious exhibitions, conventions, entertainment, concerts and gala events. Opened in mid-2022, the new exhibition World Bahrain is the largest venue of its kind in the Middle East, offering 95,000 square meters of exhibition space over 10 halls and a 4,000-seat tiered auditorium. 95 meeting rooms, royal and VIP medicines supported by event organizers' offices and a 250-seat capacity restaurant. In international news, in response to local and external calls, the army forces and the rapid support forces in Sudan announced the extension of the humanitarian truce for a period of three days starting from yesterday evening. In a statement, the army announced its approval of the request to renew the declared the declared um, ceasefire and on the other hand, the rapid support forces announced in a statement their approval of the U.S.-Saudi mediation request to extend the armistice for a period of 72 hours in the same context. The Civil Aviation Authority in Sudan extended the closure of the country's airspace until the 13th of May with the exception of humanitarian aid flights and the evacuation of foreign nationals. A U.S. military ship coming from Sudan arrived in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia with 308 people of 60 nationalities on board. This comes as a continuation of the efforts made by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in evacuation from Sudan to the Kingdom. Earlier, an Indian military plane arrived at uh, King Abdullah Air Base in Jeddah, coming from Sudan, carrying 123 Indian citizens on board. The second evacuation plane from uh, Sudan arrived in uh, the UAE, carrying 136 passengers from the UAE, diplomats and nationals from nine countries. While the Egyptian Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the state's efforts were succeeded last Saturday, and Sunday in returning 561 Egyptians through the land crossing between Egypt and Sudan. Preparations for the coronation of King Charles III of Britain on May 6 in the British capital London are underway with the approach of the first event of its kind in 70 years. The first rehearsals for this event are taking place as this historic day will begin with the King's Parade which will head to Westminster from Buckingham Palace in a carriage that will travel about two kilometers. The ceremony will also witness the coronation of Queen Camilla, wife of the King of Britain and the coronation will be followed by wide celebrations across the the country. In other news, the public opening of the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque in Indonesia will take place before this year's Ramadan in Indonesia as the government pins hopes on the new mosque to attract tourists and become a center for moderate Islam. The mosque in uh, Solo, central Java, is a smaller replica of the popular landmark in Abu Dhabi named after the UAE's late president, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, and is a gift from the UAE president, Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahyan, who inaugurated it alongside Indonesian president, Joko Widodo, in November. The mosque, which can accommodate up to 14,000 people has designed elements unique to the region. She added such, uh, such as the usage of uh, patek patterns on the flooring and carpets. Patek is an ancient art form in Indonesia traditionally made with wax resistant dye on fabrics. <laughs> 